Hello everybody, welcome to ASR African Stories Realized. This is our weekly review of The Wife, let's jump right into it. Episode 7 picks up the morning after Somu revealed that she's pregnant to Mkele. Mkele promises to protect her and the baby. Somu doesn't seem too happy. I think it's cause she's still not certain of the baby's paternity. And she's worried. After losing the last baby, she doesn't know what might take Mkele off. And if he does find out what happened between Somu and Kawe, definitely somebody's gonna die. Moving on, Nkosana and Zaza discuss Nomuso and how they can convince her to stay in jail in place of Zaza. At the taxi rank, Mangoba calls a meeting of the other taxi owners to query why there are illegal taxis loading on their route and vows to find out where these illegal taxis are coming from. The Majola brothers are nervous at this point because they know that they need to cover their asses. All of this is their doing. Back at the house, Zaza and Nkosana replace the portrait of her. It looks the same to me me with the only distinction being a crown which sends a message to Somu I believe that Zaza is the queen of the house. Zaza also informs Ngosana that she is in the process of finding the boys a new school. Zaza also suggests that she should try speak to Nomuso woman to woman and convince her to follow through with their deal. Ngosana agrees and clearly can't say no to Zandile. Back at the taxi rank, the younger Zulu brothers Nkoti and Ntika are discussing their dream girls when one actually passes by. The younger Zulu brother Ntika approaches the Slay Queen and tries to spit a bit of game as Nkotli looks on. The Zulu brother managed to exchange numbers with the Slay Queen but already from the first interaction she was asking for money and he couldn't say no. Nkotli was looking on and he wasn't pleased with what he was seeing to start with but I have to say it was a little bit of good comedic relief. The younger Zulu brothers always offer a little bit of comedy you always got something to laugh about they are the comedic relief of the show also i have to say the soundtrack selection for this episode is very good the songs really carry the scenes on this one big ups next up we have zaza and mandisa trying to con their way into a school despite the principal being reluctant to enroll zaza and Gosana's children i have to say great chemistry between zaza and mandisa these two they look like they've been besties for years the two ladies claimed they were acquainted with Oprah and the principal simply ate it up. As Zaza and Mandisa left the school, someone actually recognized Zandile and looked surprised to see that she is free and out of jail. Back with the younger Zulu brother Nzika, he's at Mangoba's tavern with the slay queen he met earlier and she is running his pockets. She's buying the most expensive champagne, she's buying herself meat platters. So needless to say, Nzika is quickly realizing that he's getting more than what he bargained for. Zaza and Nkosana visit Nomuso's mother who informs them that Nomuso's son is getting worse and has a spinal infection that needs to be operated on urgently or he will become a quadriplegic, a handicap without the use of his limbs. Next up, the association chairman Mangoba and the other taxi owners are on the hunt for the taxis which are operating illegally on the route. They manage to catch some of the illegal taxi and Mangoba disciplines them. The Majola brothers are reluctant to partake in the mob justice as the illegal taxis on the route is their doing. Zaza and Ngosana finally meet Tebe, Nomuso's son. They try to keep his spirits up but in the process suffer a moment of grief as they remember the son they lost in the brutal massacre from season 1. Next, the lady who recognized Zaza earlier at the school calls somebody in jail. It turns out she's a former convict and the inmate she's calling in jail is Zaza's former cellmate. The two of them on the phone put together the pieces of Zaza's escape and figure out that she must have paid her way out and put someone else in her place. Back at the house, Zaza requests that Ngosana pay Nomuso 1 million and build her mother a house to move them out of the shack, which she described as being worse than jail. Episode 7 ends with the new chairman, Mangoba, ruling with an iron fist and executing the drivers of the illegal taxis. Episode 8 opens up with intruders at the Majola home. The Majola brothers are confronted by the associates of the illegal taxis that made a deal with the Majola brothers. They spare their lives, but they still everything in their house. Next we cut to the prison where Nomuso calls her mother who reassures her that the Zulus visited them and made promises. After that we cut back to the house with the sister wives where Somu confronts Zaza for taking her own kids out of boarding school. Zaza is not impressed and reminds Somu that she is the boy's mother and she knows best. 
This moment is interrupted by Sambulo. Back at the Majola brothers' empty home, they lament their bad fortune and once again attribute it all to the Zulu boys. The younger Majola brother is up to something. At the bus rank, Nkoti meets Ntika's new girl and she invites him to join them for a chill session with her friends later. Nkoti does not look impressed with how recklessly Ntika is spending money on her. Next, we're back at Nomuso's mom's place, where Zandile has finally arrived with Sambulu and Mandisa to pick up Tebe for his operation. Ngotki confronts Ntika about his reckless spending. Ntika accuses him of being jealous, which he denies, and agrees to join Ntika, his girlfriend, and her friends for a chill session later. We cut to the hospital, where Zazen and Gosana are patiently waiting while Tebe undergoes his life-saving operation. Ngosana leaves Zaza at the hospital while she waits for feedback from the doctors. The Majola brothers are up to no good once more as they intimidate an assistant manager at a filling station into helping them with something shady. I'm not quite sure what they're planning yet but this was easily one of my favorite scenes of the day as they intimidated this man and threatened his family forcing him to do what they wanted. Back at the hospital, Zandile and Mandisa gossip about Thomu once again and talk about their cold interaction earlier. Zaza vows to beat up Thomu if she doesn't stay in her lane. Mandisa stokes the fire as she reiterates that all the Zulu brothers have spoiled Thomu and Zaza is not happy about this. She is ready to put hands on Thomu. We cut to Langa's apartment where Mkoti and Ntika have thrown a party full of sleigh queens. Langa isn't pleased and Ntika's girl finally makes her move as she distracts Ntika Ntika before taking his credit card and drifting it to one of the other slay queens. Yeah, ne? Then we cut to the hospital where the doctor reports to Zaza that they cannot restart Tebe's heart despite their best efforts. Zaza is distraught at the news and the fear of her going back to jail becomes all too real. Episode 8 ends with the Majola brothers plan unfolding as they steal some of the Zulu brothers taxis from the filling station where they park overnight. The final episode of the week, episode 9, opens up at the hospital where doctors return to Zaza with good news that they managed to restart Tebe's heart and he is now in recovery. Next we cut to Mangoba's office where he informs his brothers that their taxis have been stolen overnight. The brothers mobilize to find out what happened to their taxis. Back at Langa's flat, Ntika is looking all over the apartment for his credit card and by the time he realizes his slay queen girlfriend took it, she had turned off her phone. Ntika hides the fact that he has been scammed by his girl from Ngoti. Back at the prison, Ngosana visits Nomuso and reports to her that the surgery was a success and her son is in recovery. Ngosana also updates Nomuso that they will give her family 1 million rand and build her mother a new house. Nomuso was happy with this news. And finally, Ngosana facilitates a video call between Nomuso and her son. A very heartfelt moment. Next, Nkele and Thomu visit their traditional healer to set up a cleansing ceremony. The traditional healer informs them that they must name the child they lost in the miscarriage so that it can shine the light for the baby they're expecting. He also said a miscarriage can be a way of the ancestors teaching you a lesson. So that's just his way of telling Tele that he messed up. Karma came around on him. Throughout this entire meeting with the traditional healer, Somu remained quiet. I wonder if the paternity of the baby is something the traditional healer can sense. Maybe it's something that Somu was afraid of that the traditional healer might be able to sense that something is off. But I'm not fully sure how this works or how the ancestors communicate through healers. Back at the house, Zaza receives a call from the boys' school informing her that her older son had gotten into a fight. We cut to the bus rank when Zika is desperately trying to reach his slay queen girlfriend and as he's trying to call her up to no avail, 50k reports to be withdrawn from the credit card and now he really starts to panic. I feel sorry for the boy. I also do have to point out she knows his password because the second time they met at Mangoba's tavern he was swiping and he punched in the code so she long knew the code. She was just waiting to make her move. Next we cut to Mangoba's tavern where he meets with the owner of the filling station that was housing their stolen taxis. Bob Shomani insists he had nothing to do with the taxis disappearing and was out of town but assured Mangoba he will question his employees on the matter. Mangoba is usually a hothead but he handled this with respect and I think he believed the story the old man told him because he is innocent in this regard. It's his assistant manager who worked with the Majola brothers. Back to Ntika. The boy is depressed because he can't reach his slay 
queen girlfriend and took their credit card and 50,000 out of their account. He finally confesses to Ngotli that he messed up and Ngotli berates him for being so careless and also reminding him that he warned him. Ngosana is the only one who could have blocked the card and Ntika was afraid to tell him but I think he could have just claimed it was lost without giving the details to prevent the Slay Queen girlfriend from stealing the money. In this situation you always have to go to the bank first. Call the bank first. Call the bank immediately and get the card cancelled so that whoever stole it can't use it. Now back to the house where Zandile and Gosana catch up and discuss their son acting out at school and not respecting his mother. Gosana almost beats the boy with his belt but Zaza stops him and advises the boy to go apologize to his father. Meanwhile the Majola brothers are celebrating the success of their taxi heist with some slay queens when the commissioner calls to meet with them. Back at the house Zandile receives a phone call from her old cellmate Bully. Bully demands Zaza come and see her and suggests that she has dirt on Zaza Zaza, which she can put out if she doesn't come see her. I don't know if she just means that she knows about the escape but I think she means that she might have some other information on Zaza that she might be able to use against her. While she's on the phone Ngosana comes through but Zandile hides the identity of the caller from Ngosana and pretends it's Mangisa. She looks very concerned. Episode 9 ends with the Majola brothers and the commissioner meeting to plot the downfall of the Zulu brothers. The older Majola brothers said something about an eye for an eye so I do believe they are gonna try kill one of the wives either Somu or Zandile and this plot will directly lead to the commissioner finding out that Nkosana managed to get his wife out of jail without his assistance. It's heating up that's all I can say. It's a whole lot of drama. It's a telenovela. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me. It takes a lot of time and work to put these videos together so I would appreciate y'all to take a second out to subscribe. I'll be back next week with another review. This is ASR, African Stories Realized, for the love of African filmmaking and storytelling.